Welcome to DIY Guitar Making, episode number 49, Knives for Removal of Fretboards and Bridges. Brought to you by Eric Schaefer Guitars. For more information on my premium guitar making courses, visit ericschaeferguitars.com. So these are my personal favorites right now. I'm always on the lookout for new tools that I can use uh, specifically for this task, for removing fretboards and bridges and things like that. And these just so happen to be my all-stars right now at the moment. So I'm really just going to talk about my favorite ones here. And from left to right, we have these three are icing spatulas. This, I'm actually not sure what this would have originally been intended for, but this was a flea market find, and honestly, this is my best tool for removing fretboards and bridges, only because it tapers very, very slowly to such a fine edge. And it's a good, strong metal, because it holds that edge. It's not, it's not breaking at the edge, and so I can continue to use this without uh, damaging the tool. Let's take a look at how thin that edge actually is. It is seven thousandths of an inch. That's great. So these are a little bit thicker, but they still work great in certain instances. They're even preferred. These are seventeen thousandths of an inch at the edge. Uh, this one's probably the same. No, no, it's quite a bit more. It's twenty-two. Um, and it's actually good to have a variety of thickness knives for this, but having one that's hyper thin like this one is, for, for me at least, is a must. This is my favorite bridge removal knife by far. This is always my starter. So I'll use this one on a, on a really tight joint. I'll start with this one because that edge is so thin. It can, it can find its way under the joint without um, damaging the two parts that are pressed together. Now these are nice just because of their, their length and as you can see the handle comes up at an angle which keeps your hand safely off the rest of the guitar while you're, you're working with it. So these ones I'll use for some of the larger glue joints that I want to remove. Like for example if I'm re removing the entire fretboard I can use the whole length of this thing to uh, get some, some distance underneath the fretboard. Um, the disadvantage of these is when you're just working up close, just starting to get under a glue joint, that the handle being the handle being way back here makes it a little hard to control the very front of the tool. So most of the time I don't use these. This one is much more useful on, on smaller jobs. And just for even on a larger job like removing the fretboard, I'll still use this to get it started because my hand is closer to the working edge of the tool, which just gives me a little more control. When I buy new spatulas from the store, I'll usually take a, a block of 80 grit sandpaper and just thin out that edge to a more desirable um, thickness. And I'm not going to thickness right at the edge because I actually want a very shallow taper. I don't want a a hard taper right at the edge like this. I want a very shallow taper. Now this is really a great tool to have. This is simply a fish spatula. So you can find this at a kitchen store and it has this bend put into it. And so I use this all the time for um, when I use double stick tape to attach a template or something to a piece of wood. This comes in handy for removing that template. I'll sometimes use these for that same end, but this works just great for it because that angle has some spring to it, so it starts to apply pressure to the joint where the uh, template is double stick taped to the wood. And so with this heated up, as I press that in further, that tension will release 
the two pieces. Also, this is a very efficient tool in that the only part of this tool that you really need, or any of these tools, that's really working, that's getting the job done, is the very front edge. And so with the fish spatula, all this extra material um, has been relieved, and you can heat this up very efficiently. Now, it dissipates the heat pretty quickly because there's less metal behind it. But what you're doing is you're really only heating that front edge, and you don't have all this hot metal behind it. So by dissipating the heat that's away from the tool, it makes it a little safer to use in certain situations where you're working around, say, a finish or something like that, where a hot tool is not um, desirable. For heating up my knives and spatulas, I really like this heat gun. I have another heat gun that I don't really use because it doesn't stand up like that. It's really very, very useful um, to find a heat gun that is designed to stand on its end like that because I rarely use the heat gun like this to heat up a joint. Sometimes, well, I'll, I'll prep the joint usually by heating it up like this, but then in order to heat up the spatulas, instead of having to do this and use both of my hands, I can leave that running right there. And now with my other hand, I could still be working, working the joint while I'm heating up the other spatula. That way I can just switch hands, start heating up the next spatula while my left hand goes to work on the glue joint. So if you're looking for a heat gun, I would really recommend one that stands on its back like this. This one uh, is, is just a porter cable. Also, I want to mention that to get started in this kind of repair work, um, you really only need two, and I'm just picking randomly, any of these two. Well, whatever you go out and you find, if you go to a, a restaurant store um, to get icing spatulas, or you get a fish spatula, or something like this at a flea market, you really only need two to start. Having one um, is okay, you could get some jobs done, but it's not ideal. Having two allows you to work one under, and then begin to stack the other one over top of it, and then you can pull that one out and enter the joint at another spot while leaving this one in. It, that sort of uh, way that the, the two spatulas play off of each other is a really clean and efficient way of removing glue joints rather than working the one spatula in, removing it, heating it, and then going back in. And so you can get everything you need for this at uh, some sort of kitchen store or even a, a Target or a Walmart or something like that department store but I actually I find the best tools knives spatulas for removing fretboards and bridges at flea markets and every time I go to a flea market I'm always on the lookout for these things and I find new ones there all the time uh, that's where I found this little guy and so I hope you got something out of this quick deep dive into knives and spatulas for removal of glue joints and I hope next time that you're out at a kitchen store or a flea market, you keep your eyes out for these nifty little tools. And I will see you later. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel here. But remember, not every episode of DIY Guitar Making is a video. I like to write too, so some episodes are written articles. For a full archive of episodes, go to my website, ericshaferguitars.com. Click the DIY Guitar Making tab, and you will find page after page of detailed guitar making tips. You can also subscribe to the email list to receive episodes in your inbox as they come out. Just enter your name and email and click sign up now. It's free. While you're there, you can also click the Online Guitar Building School tab and check out the online course, Building an OM Acoustic, with more than 60 detailed instructional videos, discounts to luthier suppliers, and access to myself and a community of builders in the members forum. Finally, if you go to the Hands-On Guitar Building School tab, you can check availability and register for an intensive hands-on workshop with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania. That's all for now. See you later.